Hi there, I'm Tofer Mokshevsky, the new resident conductor and repetitor at Calgary Opera. And I do so love me some bourbon. So I figured we would take a little bit of a break from rehearsals on Italian Girl to go and try some. So bourbon is a style of American whiskey, most famously from Kentucky. It's actually named after a county in Kentucky, Old Bourbon, and All that's right. where the term comes from. And it was because the barrels would be labeled Old Bourbon when they left the port. Uh, so bourbons like Elijah Craig, like Four Roses, uh, and Eagle Rare are all made by distilleries in Kentucky, but bourbon does not have to be made in Kentucky. It's just a style of whiskey that can be made anywhere in the United States. Ah, okay. The rules are 51% corn in the mash bill with an amount of rye, wheat, or barley added, and it has to be matured in a new oak barrel. There are a few other technicalities, but those are the two most important ones that contribute to the flavor profile and style of the whiskey. There are bourbons made in New York and other places, and one of the ones we're going to sample, the, e, uh, the breaking and entering bourbon from St. George's, is distilled in Kentucky and matured in Kentucky, but it's blended and bottled in San Francisco by St. George's Distillery. Ah, okay. So we have a couple of different bourbons here. Okay. Uh, bourbons come in different styles. They also come in different strengths. So this particular one here is 43%. Uh, that's the breaking and entering bourbon. And then the E.H. Taylor is bottled at a higher proof of 50%, which is not uncommon. So we're going to nose and taste this whiskey now. Um, Thank you. One of the things that's sort of interesting, and people may, might not think about it, but the reason why we nose a whiskey, it relates to the, to the taste and to the brain and, and, and our impressions of flavor. 70% mm -hmm. of what the brain interprets as taste actually comes from our nose. Nose is far more powerful than the palate. So when you come to a tasting at a shop like ours, one of the things we'll, we'll spend some time on is what does the whiskey smell like? What's the, no, what's the aroma? What's the nose? When you're nosing a whiskey, unlike with wine, you don't want to agitate it in the glass. You do that with wine to create oxidation, to open up the wine and to release aroma. What ends up happening with whiskey though is you're just releasing the alcohol, you're, you're kind of agitating it. Uh, and this ties into the second aspect of nosing a whiskey, which is that you don't put your nose in the glass and leave it for a long period, you just go in for a quick pass and try and capture your first impression. Mm -hmm. Like this I find is a little bit toasty. There's some aromas of caramel and nuts on the nose. The reason you don't leave your nose in there is you're just gonna get that alcohol wafting in. It's gonna desensitize it so that if you need to go nose another whiskey, your nose will be less effective. Right. So that's the nose. The next aspect is the taste. And uh, tied into the taste is the finish. So there's two components to it. Normally when we taste a whiskey, we're, just, we're gonna take a first sip to cleanse our palate to mask uh, or to get rid of uh, any aromas or flavors that are already in there, like cigarettes, like coffee or a meal we just had, or, or heaven forbid, another bourbon. Uh, and then the finish, after you've tasted it, uh, is the experience of the whiskey after you've swallowed it. Is it warming? Is it dry? Is it coating, oily? What sort of flavors are there? And are those flavors present? So let's take a little sip of this whiskey here. I like to hold it for a few moments. Uh, there's one Scottish brand ambassador that feels you should hold the whiskey in your mouth for as many seconds as it is years old, uh, which <laughs> when you get into some of these 40 year old whiskeys can be a it's while. But what you're trying to, to capture there is what sort of flavors are you finding in your mouth? Uh, this is fairly sweet and toasty. There's a nice nuttiness to it and some caramel. And then as you go to the finish, the other aspect to it is that there's a nice warming, but it's gentle, it's mm -hmm. soft. It's a bit soft, yeah. And there's a little bit of an oiliness and that's coming from the oak, uh, kind of coating the mouth uh, and leaving some nice flavors as it, uh, as it dissipates. So the color in the glass is all natural. This is coming from the oak barrel. When the spirit is distilled, it's perfectly colorless. It's coming off the still with no color whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And the color is actually coming from the American oak barrels that it's matured in. Now, as those barrels are always new, uh, the amount of color in the whiskey will really depend on time. How long is it in that barrel uh, and how much color is it able to extract? There's no exact science to it, and this is because every barrel is made from a tree. Trees are living organisms, and no two trees are, are they're, identical. They're variables, yeah. Um, and, and oftentimes, even the slope on which the tree grows, depending on what way it faces, that'll impact the color as well. Okay. And I suppose it's the flavor. So I think we've done our best to learn everything we can about bourbon. Why don't you join me next time as I try and find my way around Calgary?